الحمد لله فاطر الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الالم ومرك التوبه عن الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الاكرم ذو الشرف الاشم والنور الاتم والكتاب المحكم خير ولد ادم الذي بشر به عيسى ابن مريم ودعا لبعثته ابراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم ان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه في الدين ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار عباد الله اوصيكم واياي بتقوى الله وحسن عباده All praise is due to Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger. He who Allah guides will never be misguided, and he who Allah misguides will never be guided. We begin today's khutbah with Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. During the time of his imara, when he was Amir al-Mu'mineen, one day he went to Khaybar, a city outside of Medina, to check on the people of Khaybar. And while he was there, he slept under a tree. And after while he was sleeping, a woman came to him, and she kicked his foot slightly to wake him. So Umar ibn Khattab wakes up from his sleep, and he asks her, how may I help you? She says, I saw you and I thought good of you, not knowing who you are, and I'm hoping that you can help me. He said, what do you need? She said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn Khattab, not knowing that he was the one she was speaking with. He said, last year he sent Muhammad ibn Abi Maslama, one of the great Sahabas. He came to Khaybar to give the zakat, to give the zakat, give the charity. And he didn't give me. And I am a woman with orphans. So Umar ibn Khattab, the second he heard that, he says, Ya Haifa, his servant, O oh, Haifa, go call Muhammad ibn Abi Maslama. And the woman says, Ma da'awtuka I didn't want you to call him. I wanted you to come with me and go speak with him. Umar ibn Khattab tells her, if he doesn't come to us, we will go to him. Haifa walks to Muhammad ibn Abi Maslama. And he says, Ya Muhammad, Amir al-Mu'mineen wants to speak to you. So Muhammad ibn Abi Maslama when Tamir Mu'mineen, what choice does he have? He walks in and he says, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Assalamu alaykum, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar al Khattab. The narrator that narrates this story says, when the woman heard Umar al Khattab, she got shy. She had just attacked Umar al Khattab and one of his ummah, one of the people that worked for him. She got shy and embarrassed. But Umar ibn Khattab didn't even look at her. He looked right to Muhammad ibn Abi Maslama. And he said, Oh Muhammad, do you know what we used to be at the beginning of Islam, me and you? Kunna akala taras. He said, we used to be such a small group of people that the meat in a brain of a cow or a brain of a camel would be enough to feed all of us. That's how small in number we were. And everybody was against us. Now that we are in a place of power, we're taking advantage of our power. Muhammad ibn Abi Maslam says, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, don't be hasty with me. Wallahi, if I did not ignore her on purpose, maybe I did not know of her or she did not come to me. So Umar ibn Khattab tells Muhammad ibn Abi Maslam, this year when I send you for zakat, give the woman for this year and for last year. And he turns to this woman and he says, go back to your home. I will send for you money right now. Why did I begin my khutbah with this story? I began my khutbah with this story for three primary reasons. The first, is the humility of Umar ibn Khattab First seeing him being a king, what we declare today as a king, but Amir al-Mu'mineen, at the time of his Imara, the 
the kingdom of Islam, the glory of Islam, had went from almost China, almost to Morocco. All of that was under Muslim rule. And this man was sleeping under a tree without a bodyguard to guard him. Second, when this woman came to ask for his help, the first thing he could have said, why are you waking me? Who are you to even speak to me? Do you know who I am? But on the contrary, he was humble in his actions. Humble in his interactions with her. To the point where she couldn't even tell that this was Amir al-Mu'mineen. That this was the person that leads the entire ummah. Third is the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave tawfiq to this woman and to Umar ibn Khattab First to this woman to go ask a man that can actually help her, ask an individual that can help her. She was put in a place to ask anyone. But the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided her to was Amir al-Mu'mineen. And second is Umar ibn Khattab on the day of judgment, he would have been asked about this woman. How did you not secure food and water for this woman? Isn't she under your kingdom? Isn't she under your rulership? This is the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does that tell all of us today? What should that push all of us to do today? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us. He says, Ahabu nas Allah. And found The most beloved of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that helps people. You see someone in need, you shouldn't even wait, you shouldn't even have to pause for a second. They need your help. Do what you can. Give what you can. And that is from your humility. Because you know, who knows, I could have been in this situation yesterday. Or I can be in this situation tomorrow. How can I not help them today when I have the strength and the health? And it's ever so crucial for our youth, for our young. Those of us that have our health. Something that we cannot imagine. The value and the blessings of it until it's gone. And the only way you begin to realize the blessings of one's health is when we do not have it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes us to be humble. Pushes us to do good for others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, talking about the believers, He says, These believers, inshallah, us, every one of us is going to be amongst them. What are their characteristics? Who are these individuals? This is the characteristics that we should strive for. They're humble to one another. So ask yourself, this is a question for all of us, for myself. Am I humble when I speak to my brother or sister? Am I kind to them? Or do I talk to them with my nose up in the air? Like I am worthy or I deserve to be respected. Is that being the need? Is that being someone who is humble? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't stop there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the best of creation. He says, And be gracious, O Muhammad, O Prophet, the best of mankind. Be gracious to everyone that follows you. So what about us? Should we not be gracious to the people that follow the deen of, Prophet, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the Prophet وسلم, even rings it up higher and higher. He says, being humble with people isn't, isn't a weakness, isn't a downgrade. But on the contrary, those who are humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are humble to others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise them in His sight. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would constantly make dua for this. Constantly make dua to keep his ego down and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to be humble with everybody. And he'd be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he has been given. Irregardless of 
understood the situation. Umina Aisha once saw the Prophet وسلم, praying all night long. And she was confused. O Messenger of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much. He's given you even that all your sins, ma taqaddam wa ma ta'akhar, are forgiven. Whatever has previously happened and whatever will happen have already been forgiven. Should you not just take it easy? From the humility of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responds to her so beautifully. He said, Alam akun abdan shakura. Do not be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that He has given me, everything that I have been given was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is from my own doing. Nothing is because of me. And for that reason and that reason alone, I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humble to everyone around me. Because I know that everything I have is from Him. And He would make dua every single night. He would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min as-sulbi ba'd al-hatab. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from you. I seek refuge from you. From taking something away from you after you have given it. Because I know the difficulty that people may have. I see it with my eyes. People are going through struggles day in and day out. We don't know what our brothers and sisters are going through. We don't know the decisions that they are making, why they are making them. So how can we judge them too quickly? How can we not be humble in our interaction with them, kind in our way of interacting with them? Maybe that brother that just cut you off on their way out was rushing because his mother or father are in the hospital. How can I not be humble and kind to them to realize that I don't know the struggle that they are going through, the difficulty that they are having. For that reason and that reason alone, I'm going to be kind and merciful. I'm going to be humble in my actions. And this is ever so true <coughs> when we see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we don't realize, especially as young people, we don't realize how much He has given us. We always look at the people that are better off than we are. We see those millionaires and billionaires and we're disappointed in ourselves. I have nothing. Oh, I can't buy that watch or that shoes or that this or that that. I have nothing. What is there to be thankful for? Imam Harun al-Rashid, one of the great Amir al-Mu'mineen of his time, he was once asked, and I want us just to put into perspective how large his kingdom was at the time. The Islamic Empire had went all the way to China to as far west as Spain as far north as France and as far as south as Ethiopia. He was once asked, O oh, Harun al-Rashid, how much do you value on a cool, on a hot day? How much would you value a cup of water if it was held from you? What would you give up just for a cup of water that was held from you? I want us to ask ourselves this question. If you are so thirsty, what would you give up for that cup of water? Harun al-Rashid said, I would give up half of my wealth. Half of everything I own, I'll give it up. So he was then asked a, a subsequent question. He said, what would you give up to release yourself, to go to the bathroom from that cup of water that you just drank? He said, I'd give up the other half of my wealth. So the scholar that was talking to him, he says, how petty a wealth is not worth more than a cup of water. How many of us go and drink water without even thinking? How many of us turn on the tap and see clean water coming out? How many people around the world are just dreaming of the day they can get clean water? Or praying for the day that they don't have to walk a few miles to the nearest river? How can we not be thankful for that? How can we not be humble to everyone around us? And who gave us this? Who entitled us to this? Why were we born in the situation that we were born in? To have the parents that we had. To live in a country like this country. 
What entitled us to this when we were first born? Nothing. Imam Malik ibn Dina was once asked, he was walking and one of the umara, one of the princes was walking and he bumped into the prince by accident. And the prince turned to him and he said, do you not know who I am? Being arrogant. Look at me, I'm a prince. How can you hit me? How can you bump into me? And Malik ibn Dina responds to him so casually, so calmly. You were nothing more than a child when you were born naked when you came out of your mom. And when you die, you'll be nothing more than a carcass buried in the grave. And everything in the middle is just part of your life. So who are you to be arrogant? And he responds to him even more harshly. He says, you are someone, if you wouldn't ask who am I? if I didn't know who you were. You are someone not worthy to be arrogant to, the people, to, to your brothers and sisters around you. And this, is, this point of this khutbah today wasn't to make us feel bad about ourselves or to see how much we have. But the point of this khutbah today is to realize how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and to be thankful to him. And to remember our brothers and sisters that have much, much, much less than we do. How can we not be humble towards them? How can we not be kind to everyone around us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes us, he teaches us in the Quran. If you want to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show thanks in your actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Sayyidina Dawood, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودَ شُكْرَهَا Act! You want to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given you? You want to show that you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Show it in your actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be thankful for everything that He gives us. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ رَحِيمٌ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا. In the first part of this khutbah, I talked about the importance of humility and the importance of being thankful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And I want to comment on this concept of being thankful for one second. And then we're going to go into our homework for this week. The task that every single one of us is going to take and make it our goal for the week. When it comes to being thankful for everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, there is no way for you to ever get to a point where you have thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. And it's so profound in this next story. Imam Hazrat al-Basri, one of the great Imams of his time, was sitting with his, with his students. They were having a meal. And as that had someone that has given up the dunya, has relieved the dunya, but it seems like he relieved it not knowingly. Imam Hazrat al-Basri saw him walking, he called him, he said, come join us in our meal. So this man says, لا أحسن شكرها I don't know how to be thankful enough for that one meal. It's too much for me. How can I be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that meal? Imam Hazrat al-Basri says, ما أحمق هذا الرجل How ignorant is this man? أو هل يحسن شكر شرب الماء? Can he even be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a cup of water, let alone for a meal? let alone for our sight, let alone for our health, let alone for our wealth, let alone for everything else. Even being able to be thankful for those things is something to be thankful for. Because how many people has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them so much? 
and they don't they don't associate it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They associate it to themselves. And that void that they have, that struggle that they have internally, is because of how far away they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's our homework for this week? What's our homework for today? First and foremost, we're going to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how we're going to do that by following in the footsteps of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Every opportunity that we get, every chance that we have, we see an action of good that we can take, we must take it. Because how many people leave their homes never to return? How many people go to sleep never to wake up? It can't be us. We have to plan. And the way we plan is by following in the footsteps of the Prophet Doing everything that we can. Number two, be humble to every person we interact with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He'll give us something for that. For that humility, for that kindness with every person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ نَجْعَلُهَا إِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عَلُوًّا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا Truly the year after is for who? Who, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? For the people that are humble, that don't want destruction in this earth or corruption. That should be every last one of us. Every last one of us should look at their brother or sister and say, I don't know their situation. I don't know why they did this or this or said this or this. And for that reason, I'm going to be kind to them. I'm going to be merciful to them. Because maybe, most definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me so much. So with what He has given me, I'm going to be thankful to Him in my actions. Number three. Every night before we sleep, every night before we sleep, as we are putting our heads on the pillow, to count the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. To be thankful for all of the blessings. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And be as descriptive as possible. Think about it as hard as you can. Your children, your parents, your health, your wealth, everything that He has given you. The more you realize that you have, the more you will be satisfied and say, SubhanAllah, how can I not be happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me? How can I not be humble to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me? And the last thing, the people are going to praise us for the work that we've done. And to be clear from my entire khutbah, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I don't want you to sit at home and say, Allah has given me, I will no longer work. I will no longer strive for greatness. That would be the exact opposite of what I'm saying. Use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to strive for greatness, to be the best that you can, to aim for the stars. And in your quest, people will begin to praise you. That should never be your goal. But even if they do praise you, do what the Sahaba before us did. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, every time he was praised, he would say, Allahumma ja'alni khayran mimma yadhunnoon, wa khfilli ma la ya'lamoon. O oh Allah, grant me to be better than what they think of me. Allow me to be better than what they think of me. But O oh Allah, forgive the sins that I have, the things that they don't know about me. Our hidden sins that if anyone saw them, they wouldn't look at us twice. And in that, we have to be humble. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed our sins, concealed our negative attributes. So be thankful to Him for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be thankful. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt. Wa haafina fi man haafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma hdina wa hdi bina wa jalanna sabani man ibtada. 
اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم ويستغفره يغفر لكم واقم الصلاه